Hello and welcome to the CNBC Africa special. It has been dubbed one of the biggest pan-African business stories of the year. It has involved two of the most powerful economies and uh, one of the most powerful telecom companies in Africa. It started out as a dispute between MTN and the central bank of one of the host countries, Nigeria. It has ended up as an international dispute involving a court case and billions of dollars. How did it all happen? And of course, who is going to win? What could the long-term uh, damage be of all of this? And uh, we have one of the key players with us in the studio, the man with the eyes on the books of MTN, Ralph Mupita Group, Chief Financial uh, Officer of MTN. In Nigeria, we are joined by uh, Esther Owani and uh, Bismarck J. Rewane, uh, Managing Director of uh, Financial Derivatives Company Limited. And uh, here in South mm -hmm. Africa, myself, Arnold Segoa. And the other beautiful Fifi Peters. <laughs> Arnold, you are far too kind. Of course, it is uh, one of the biggest uh, stories right now on the continent. And uh, we'd like to begin uh, by first taking a look at the roots of this dispute and the long road to where we are now. On the 29th of August, MTN Nigeria, part of the MTN Group, received a letter from the Central Bank of Nigeria. It alleged that certificates of capital importation issued in respect of the conversion of shareholders' loans in MTN Nigeria to preference shares in 2007 had been improperly issued. Nigerian banks issue certificates of capital importation to confirm an inflow of foreign currency in cash or goods by an investor or lender. As a consequence, CBN claimed that historic dividends repatriated by MTN Nigeria between 2007 and 2015, amounting to $8.1 billion, needed to be refunded to the central bank. MTN Nigeria strongly refuted these allegations and claims. On September the 4th, MTN was slapped with a $2 billion tax bill. MTN has taken the matter to the High Court in Nigeria, stating that the Attorney General exceeded his powers in demanding the $2 billion in taxes and charges from the NTM Group. The papers, filed on Monday, aim at protecting MTN Nigeria's assets, also showed MTN was seeking $10 million from the West African country in court and legal expenses. Since the furor, MTN's share price has plunged almost 35%. I mean, Ralph, we were uh, watching uh, the uh, story. Uh, I think a very uh, uh, putting a beautiful summary of what is not a beautiful story currently at MTN. I mean, help us understand exactly what's going on here. No, look, I, I think uh, the introduction uh, covered the, you know, the context. You know, we have received, uh, you know, two letters. Uh, the first letter came from the Central Bank uh, of Nigeria um, and uh, alleging that uh, the dividends that uh, were, you know, repatriated, uh, you know, between 2007 and 2015 were against improperly issued CCIs. And uh, it also contends that uh, there were conditions with regards to the way we did a capital restructure um, where, you know, those conditions were not met. Um, and, uh, you know, we strongly, you know, refute uh, respectfully, uh, you know, both the allegations. And uh, when we look through the paperwork of everything that we've done, you know, the, the dividends that were repatriated since inception were actually against the equity CCIs, not even against uh, the, the capital that was restructured from shareholder loans to preference shares. And even that, uh, you know, capital restructure, you know, the conditions that were, were given uh, the improve, uh, a princ uh, in principle approval, you know, those the cond two conditions were, uh, you know, placed there and those two conditions were met. So with the matter with the CBN, again, we strongly refute and I think you've also heard uh, the banks who were the authorised dealers in the transactions, they've also come out independently, uh, you know, in saying that there's nothing wrong that they did. And then on the tax matter, um, they, you know, we started a process um, probably in June, July, where we were asked to do a self-assessment. You know, we did the self-assessment from the Attorney General, and um, in the conclusion of our self-assessment, where we provided quite a lot of information to the Attorney General, we assessed what tax should have been paid on foreign payments, um, and what did we pay, and the number came out at approximately 700 million. So, you know, in that situation, you know, we're very clear that, uh, you know, the taxes that needed to be paid to the state 
either through to the customs uh, or the federal inland revenue services were paid. So that's how we've come you know, you know, and said you know, quite strongly that there's been no wrongdoing on MTN's part, number one, and that we would defend ourselves you know, vigorously if we had to. And uh, you know, a first step of that was you know, the, you know, the court, um, the injunctions that we took uh, earlier this week, basically to protect our assets as well as to protect shareholder value. Ralph, uh, if we're to speak retrospectively here, this is not the first time that you're having a run-in with, uh, well, in the country Nigeria as it is, because uh, uh, as early as 2010, we did see a fine of uh, close to 5.2 billion. This is, of course, with the uh, SIM cards. And uh, fast forward to today, th there's, there's been a row, and this hasn't just happened overnight. Uh, do you get the sense that, I, I, I'm, I don't want to sit on the fence here, but uh, how, how did we arrive here? Uh, because this has been happening for so many years you getting in trouble with the authorities in Nigeria? Are you being picked on or something of a sort? No, I wouldn't be you know, promoting what could be seen as a conspiracist theory uh, about being picked on. I mean, I think the matter with the SIM registration fine is a matter that's you know, behind us as far as we're concerned. And uh, you know, we create no linkages between that and today. So I think in the previous uh, situation, you know, there was you know, a clear you know, set of regulations about uh, you know, um, uh, how to treat, uh, you know, SIM cards to, you know, and uh, what was the, um, you know, the infraction, the consequences of that infraction. Um, that was that situation then on the SIM and that, you know, we've, you know, busy complying with the conditions of that fine. You know, the fine settlement payments are in progress and, you know, we still, you know, uh, you know, committed to meeting all the fine conditions, including the listing. So that was the situation then. I mean, this particular situation, you know, we're very clear that there's no wrongdoing on MTN's part at all. Um, and that the two matters, you know, even though they're separate, you know, um, you know we were surprised by them um, and uh, still trying to understand the context of them. So, I mean, I think it would be kind of an overreach to say that the two are related. Um, and, uh, you know, coming back to our position right now is to say, you know, we've done nothing wrong. Um, you know, we're prepared to defend ourselves legally and, uh, and do so pretty rigorously. But you know, respectfully, we will engage with authorities to try and find an amicable solution. MTN is very committed to the Nigerian market, and we really, you know, we're going to stay. Now, Ralph Esther here from Lagos. Uh, Esther, would you say that the allegations being made against uh, MTN involve issues that uh, appear to be very complex and is so is, uh, easy to uh, misunderstand and misinterpret? No, I mean, as I said, you know, for, you know, for us, um, you know, the, you know, the letters were a surprise. Um, you know, we feel that, you know, our, let's take the tax matter as an example, that, you know, we are in good standing with the tax authorities, you know, on a annual periodic basis. You know, we do get assessments from customs and the Federal, uh, federal Inland uh, Revenue Service, and they'll come with an assessment and say, you know, you owe us so much tax, please do us assessment and, and, uh, and tell us what is really due. So as far as those two institutions, you know, to the best of our knowledge, you know, we've applied our minds and we know that uh, you know, all, all dues for customs or inland revenue services you know, have been paid. So, and as you can well imagine, you know, a company has to go through its audited accounts and assess whether there are any liabilities, and we do this all the time. So you know, that's why I said you know, we were surprised by that ask or the demand for the back taxes when we, our own assessment is that it's completely there is a due amount, and that due amount has been paid. And then on the dividends uh, that were repatriated to MTN shareholders, and I think it's important to note that uh, uh, for the avoidance of doubt, uh, MTN you know, is 78.8% owned by MTN Group. There's a whole host of other shareholders who are local, uh, and the other international shareholders in that base as well. And um, the repatriations that we've done for dividends, uh, which is the excess um, you know, that uh, is distributable and approved by the board, that has all been done with equity CCIs, and the equity CCIs are not being questioned by the central bank's uh, letter. And I, if I, let me just bring in Bismarck here. Bismarck, what do you find, I mean, you've been following these yes. stories right from the beginning. What, would, what do you find the most intriguing, or perhaps surprising, about how things have unfolded so far? No, and that's the question I wanted to put to Ralph, that in all of this time, you are supervised by the NCC, which is the National Communications Commission. 
were you informed at any point in time, whether you were in any breach of any local regulation, financial or otherwise, which could have attracted such a penalty, number one. And number two, I think the, the viewers want to know how much cumulatively have you paid as taxes over this period? Because my understanding is that if you, had, if you declared a profit and you paid taxes, and based after tax you now distributed dividends, then it will be, it's almost unlikely that those dividends can be considered to be irregular. Yes, I mean, um, I, mean I think, um, you know, to, to your last question, um, you know, the dividend repatriation process starts with the, the board declaring a dividend. Uh, we go into a process of procuring, you know, hard currencies for the repatriation for foreign shareholders. Local shareholders will, will get paid in local currency. That process requires an interaction with an authorized dealer, who then happens to be the bank, and the authorized dealer has, um, you know, administrative processes they need to run with the central bank. Now, you know, we've repatriated, uh, you know, you know, a quantum of uh, dividends, um, you know, over the period of time. Uh, you know, through this process. So it always ends up with, uh, uh, you know, the approval of the central bank. Money cannot flow, uh, you know, outside of the approval of the central bank. So, you know, f from our perspective, you know, we have kind of followed the law and, uh, and, um, and all the, the due processes. And, um, you know, that's why we still f we feel pretty strongly that, uh, you know, we've done nothing wrong. And, um, you know, the reason why we went to protect ourselves in the Nigerian courts. That MTN has uh, followed all the rules of the books. Are you 100% confident that the banks that helped you repatriate these uh, dividends over that time period also followed the books 100%? Because, I mean, when you talk to the investment uh, analysts, they say that it's not MTN, as you say, but rather it's a possibility that the banks perhaps didn't do their 100% checks and balances. Are you confident that they did? No, I mean, I think the banks must speak for themselves. I can't be the bank spokesperson on this matter, but I think the process is very clear about how do you interact with the central bank with regards to the dividend, um, uh, you know, repatriations. You know, we work, you know, we, the, our process of interaction works through the authorized dealers. We never have then a direct interaction with the central bank. So, you know, to the extent that we, there are you know, there are responsibilities that we have in that whole process, we're pretty confident that we've met them. But we're not the only party in that. But I would argue that uh, it is a question that you need to put to the banks themselves. They will come out independently and put their state, but I wouldn't want to be their spokesperson on this stage. Ralph, um, uh, let me just swing you over to uh, East Africa maybe for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, in Rwanda last year, we did see a fine of uh, close to uh, uh, 8.5 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. 2015 in Uganda, we did see another fine of uh, 9.5 million uh, rand. Uh, again, anomalies here and there. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking to some of the, the people maybe in uh, the taxman's office, mm -hmm. uh, what they said off the record was, uh, at times we do not know how to tax uh, or the, the, the anomalies and the intric intricacies that actually go into uh, this, this very complex process of voice and data, do you get the sense that maybe the tax authorities do not particularly know how to delve into what exactly is transpiring at the bottom there of your numbers? No, I think that would be an unfair statement. I, I think, you know, in every country there's a tax code, you know, and uh, different countries have different tax codes. and uh, you know you know, we would need to interpret what those tax codes are as they relate to a telecommunications uh, operator such as ourselves, and we follow them. And are they the same? In every country, they're not the same. Uh, you know, do some look like they could be improved? You know, you could have an argument around that. So, I mean, it's not our place to, you know, the, the tax codes as they get implemented, you know, or obviously have to go through some sort of uh, parliamentary or regulatory process, and we, we comply with those. But as you say, you know, um, you know, do, is there a consistency, you know, among that uh, country to country, East Africa? No, you know, there, there are some differences. Now, Ralph, Esther here in Lagos. MTN says it's in talks with uh, the regulators, the Central Bank of Nigeria. What can you tell us about those talks and how they've progressed so far? And we've been having conversations here in Nigeria whether or not those talks uh, are actually a negotiation between MTN and the Central Bank. No, look, I mean, we, we, it's not, uh, you know, 
you know, we obviously are going to engage a, a variety of authorities. We will, you know, engage with the central bank and we will also engage with the AG. Uh, it's quite important for us to, you know, to be in those engagements. So and at, at the stage where we are right now, you know, we wouldn't want to be, you know, being in the public domain saying at this day to today we're talking to, you know, this particular authority. But we will, uh, in the due course of time, you know, seek engagements, you know, you know, at the highest level in the central bank and the uh, AGF. We said we would do that, um, and uh, you know, at the right time we'll do that. Um, and if there's anything that comes out of there, I'm sure it will come out in the public domain. Because, I mean, Ralph, judging by the share price, uh, your, mar your investors, rather, are very worried about this. I mean, your share price is down more than 30% mm. since this uh, mm. uh, was uh, all erupted, mm. sort of last month. And this is despite the constant affirmations that MTN has put out and mm. communicated to your shareholders that you've done nothing wrong and there's nothing to worry mm. about. They are worried. Mm. So how long is this going to take? I mean, when can they expect sort of finality on this matter so they can really uh, judge the investment profile of MTN? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the share price has uh, you know, fallen you know, you know, pretty uh, significantly and a lot of shareholder value has been impacted. You know, at the end of the day, in, in an MTN share, there are a whole host of individuals who provide, you know, take in their life savings or some of their savings and invest in the share. And for the, you know, for those investors, you know, it it uh, you know also for management, you know, management are investors as well. Uh, so there's a lot of you know value destruction in the process. Now, how long will it take? You know, it's in, indetermined for now. Uh, obviously, processes need to f uh, you know uh, progress. Uh, it's too early to say at the moment. But you know, you know, I think it would be desirous that there is an am amicable resolution to the matters uh, in in one way or the other. I mean, again, I I, I state quite un you know to be very clear that you know, we, we believe we've done nothing wrong, but we do want the situation to be resolved. We are a company that believes deeply in the, in the story about Nigeria. We've been there since 2001. You know, we, we cover 55, uh, we have 55 million subscribers on the MTN network. Our network covers about 140 million of the 186 million people. So we are committed to the Ni Nigerian market. So, so the, the investment uh, you know, case for Nigeria, we've been pretty much one of those, you know, um, you know, cases in point about the investment case. So we would think that that, that whole situation probably needs to be resolved pretty quickly so that, you know, the great story, the good story about Nigeria and how we position the market can continue. So, but the time is not uh, determined uh, at the moment. Yes, uh, Ralph, um, can you confirm to us how much of a tax holiday MTN enjoyed from the day they started business? I understand that you had maybe because of your pioneer status, you got a 10 year tax holiday. And how does this fit into the claims of shortfall in your tax, meeting your tax obligations? And also, there's what we call the statute of limitations in law, which says that any event that is older than six years cannot be claimed under law except something except a criminal act or something. Uh, how, how do these two things fit into the further claim of $2 billion of a shortfall in taxes when you were, for most of this period, you were enjoying a tax holiday? And two, what, does, what happens if you cannot go beyond 2012 under the statute of limitations? And this transaction we're talking about is 2007. Is there some gray area here that you need to clarify? No, I think you've picked up on two uh, key important points. Uh, <clears throat> so when we did enter you know, Ni Nigeria in 2001, I think it was May 2001, when we fired up the first uh, GSM site, uh, we did benefit from uh, you know, pioneer um, you know, status, um, and that provided us with, with a, a tax holiday period. So that, that for sure is, you know, um, and in many jurisdictions, you know, these pioneer statuses exist to encourage foreign investment, uh, such as the the 402 million of capital that came in initially between 2001 and 2005. But I think on your second point, which is really around, um, you know, the, the statute of limitations or prescription, as some people call it, um, is, you know, the, the period under review from the AG extends beyond the prescription period. It's a 10-year view. And to your point, you know, the six stroke seven years is more what's, uh, you, know, you know, kind of normal to review matters um, you know, that may have passed. So the ask is beyond the prescription period, and I think you will have seen that detail um, in our court filings. 
Right, look, Ralph, uh, let's just uh, take pick up maybe on what she was uh, going on about before the investment case. We have seen uh, mm. the share price get battered, maybe that 35%. Uh, you've been placed under, uh, well, Moody's uh, came out last week and mm. said they would be actually looking at uh, MTN as mm. a whole. Just uh, give us a sense of where you see this going ultimately without factoring in whether or not the ruling goes this way or the other way. Mm. No, look, I mean, uh, Moody's have come out and, uh, and as a rating agency and uh, put us on watch, um, you know, for review. And the way that process normally works, uh, works is that you maintain the rating uh. and then you give yourself up to 90 days to either affirm the rating or to take action. So they have come out, Moody's, and said, uh, you know, um, you know we're, we're basically on review for a downgrade. So not within 90 days, uh, it can happen sooner, but in a maximum of 90 days, they have to affirm the rating or to make the decision. And um, you know, review processes are normal when the situation is uncertain. As it is right now, there, you know, we see in that there are allegations, there are, you know, is MTN defending its position, mm -hmm. the AG and the CBN uh, you know, have written letters, you know, they've written letters to the, to the banks in the situation of the, the CBN. So, you know, as more information comes, you know, Moody's would need to either affirm the rating or to take a decision. So that uncertainty spills into the share price. Um, and, you know, investors, you know, do need to make their calls about do they see this being resolved quickly um, or, or, or they need to take an investment view for themselves. So, I mean, you know, when you look at uh, broker consensus, um, you don't need to believe the MTN story, but, l you know, listen to brokers. You know, this, the share is, you know, is, is very oversold and uh, trading you know, you know, uh, way below the kind of broker consensus, some of the parts. So you know, you know, our view, and you could imagine that we would say this, is that uh, you know, the extreme, you know, what we certainly see as an oversold position, you know, is you know, it's an attractive investment uh, um, you know, opportunity for MTN, for sure, uh, if you go by the broker consensus numbers. I mean, no, you wouldn't be the right kind of boss if you weren't talking <laughs> up your share price no, there for no, saying that it was attractive. But Ralph, I mean, I, as, a, as, as, as a business person, mm. I'm sure you prepare for all scenarios. Yeah. Worst case scenario, and it doesn't go your way in the courts there in Nigeria. Is MTN thinking about this? Have you guys set aside a provision for the worst case scenario? And also, what can you tell us about your uh, listing in Nigeria? No, look, I mean, any organization thinks about worst case scenarios, but, you know, there are such a range of outcomes that you can't, uh, you know, kind of pinpoint, particularly in the situation where the, you know, the, the matters are fairly new. We are within two weeks of, you know, firstly, the first letter from the, the CBN uh, uh, governor. Um, you, know, f you know, for certain, you know, you know we, we're not pinning a particular, um, you, know, you, know, you know, set of outcomes, and, you know, we'll let the situation play out. Uh, you know, before we, you know, make any kind of uh, conclusions. But, you know, as, as a company, we kind of remain, uh, you, know, you know, pretty committed uh, to running the businesses as, uh, as we have. I think importantly, to your point around the listing, the listing was a condition of the fine. You know, we've, you know we, we, we're very committed to meeting all those conditions. And, um, you know, it makes the IPO that we had planned pretty challenging and awkward but you know we've got to explore other options of you know con continuing to meet those listing requirements. So we're not sitting here saying you know listing is off. You know the the NCC um, you know EVC was in Johan uh, Durban uh, earlier this week, and he spoke about MTN. You know we want them to remain committed to listing, and for sure we remain committed. We just need to work out how can you list within this current context mm. and as early as possible. So the listing uh, plans are not plans that we've taken off completely off the table. The teams are working uh, flat out to try and meet uh, um, you know, those goals. Now, Ralph, Ralph, speaking about listing, how do you feel about the timing uh, of this fine? I mean, coming at a time when uh, MTN, I mean, you just finalized your IPO uh, in Ghana. How do you feel about how this is all playing, time, playing out and the timing? No, look, I mean, the, the timing is really awkward. Uh, we're, we're pretty far advanced, uh, you know, with all our, you know, our prospectus documentation, with uh, a lot of advisors working, uh, you know, for us, international advisors, Nigeria, local advisors working with us to progress the listing. Um, but I think importantly, um, you know, for us, you know, 
you know, it's, we, 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 as I said earlier on, we're pretty committed to meeting, um, you know, the conditions of the 2015 fine. Um, and so, you know, listing is, it remains on track. We, we are just working through how we'll do it, maybe in a, in, a, in a different way than we'd originally positioned. No decision has been made, but what, what, it, what is firm and clear is that we would like to proceed, uh, you know, with the listing as it is a condition that we'd agreed to, you know, with the authorities with relationship to the fine. Uh, Ralph, can you clarify uh, something uh, for me relating to the, the initial, uh, is it the $8.1 billion fine mm. for rep repatriating funds? I mean, we were chatting to a number of investors when that story mm. first broke, and they were saying that, all right, this is just Nigeria becoming a lot uh, uh, tighter and cleaner in its regulation. All they're asking MTN to do is bring back that money, maybe at the current exchange rate, and then afterwards uh, take it out at the old exchange rate in which you initially mm. took it out at that time. And and it, it's as simple as that. It would be a win-win. I mean, is, is, is it that clear cut? Uh, our letter, the formal communication uh, that we received uh, from uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, you know, talks about that uh, a sum of 8.1 billion must be returned to the coffers of the CBN. Um, it doesn't state that it is uh, MTN that must return that money. I think in the bank letters, which are in the public domain, uh, if you add all of them up, they add up to the 8.1 billion. Um, and as I said uh, earlier on, our letters did not say that. Our letter did not say that. But I guess even if it did say that, I, I think my point earlier on is that MTN has had a host of shareholders since 2006 and 2017. So over that period of dividend de declarations, you know, some of those shareholders would have been, for example, it's public knowledge, would have been the IFC, as an example. A shareholder in MTN Nigeria today is the PIC of South Africa. So they're a shareholder who will rec receive dividends from MTN. So, you know, that if, you know, from our perspective, you know, the, the, the notion that, you know, m you know, money will come back from shareholders and get converted to NARA, you know, we haven't been asked that. We haven't received any formal communication. For sure, there's been conjecture about it in the media. Um, it's not a communication we've received. But, you know, the, you know, the, the money has you know, the money has already gone to shareholders over a, a period of time. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that money for shareholders has been applied, you know, to, you know, to other uses of capital. Um, so we don't read it as, you know, there is an ask for MTN that, you know, you, you know, you bring back that, that, that amount. That's how we read the letter that we formally received. Yes, uh, Ralph, uh, I'm assuming that you filed your returns in Nigeria with the Corporate Affairs Commission. That's Every company is obliged to do that. At any time during this process, were there any queries or any um, reference of, or inference for that matter as to whether you were in breach of any local rules as far as your filing of your taxes, your dividends and everything? Because that's where it all ends. Was there any indication of this over the years? And how, how, what was your reaction when all of a sudden you got this, um, um, this, uh, this query? Now, to the extent of you know, our affairs and the way we manage our taxes uh, and dividends, as I said, on the taxes side, you know, from time to time you do have an assessment you know, from tax authorities to say you're due this, and you go into a process of either confirming it um, or the contrary, and that process ends in, in one way or the other. And what normally happens in that situation is either you take a tax provision or you have a contingent liability until the matter is resolved. So, you know, as we sit today and as we sat at the half year, um, you know, we did not have, you know, an exposure, tax exposures as uh, are being, um, you know, alluded to in the case of the, the two billion back taxes. So we feel that, you know, through the regulatory processes across the piece, you know, we certainly, uh, you know, have paid the tax that was due to us, or that was due to the state. Uh, and then on the dividends, as I mentioned that, uh, you know, we've been pretty, we, we work through authorized dealers. They deal with the CCIs and the interaction with the, you know, with the central bank. Um, and uh, you know, as recent as the second half of last year, we did um, you know, start uh, you know, paying back dividends in, uh, uh, you know, out of uh, Nigeria you know, after the suspension of uh, our CCIs during the Senate investigation. So we did pay a dividend in the second half of uh, 2017, and we used uh, our equity CCIs. In the first half of this year, we did pay another dividend, uh, and uh, you know, outside shareholders were, you know, 
receive that dividend and you know the equity CCRs were the basis of the dividend payment. We will leave it there, I suppose, some reassuring words for Nigeria's economy, given the significance of MTN as a taxpayer, but also uh, shareholders all over the continent, given the fact that, I mean, MTN is committed to remaining in the two biggest economies on the continent. Uh, without a doubt. It's always good to hear that uh, you are an African company and uh, you're looking <laughs> forward to uh, investing even more. Uh, that was uh, Ralph Mopito, who's a Group Chief Financial uh, Officer for MTN. Uh, many thanks to my co-host uh, in Nigeria, Esther Owani and Bismarck J. Rewane, Managing Director of uh, the Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Here in South Africa, of course, Biffy Peters from us. Have a good evening. Cheers.